Okay, so we will continue, we will discuss today the territory of the Philippines, okay, particularly the internal waters, the territorial sea, the contiguous zone, and the exclusive economic zone, okay. We should know also what are the rights of those foreign vessels that would enter into the Philippine territory. Now, I would ask you first, what do you mean by innocent passage? Okay, what is an innocent passage? Or where can a vessel enter into another territory without hazard or without violation of the rights of the state. <coughs> when can you say that the passage is innocent? When we say innocent passage, it is allowed under the law that a coastal state may entertain may allow the passage of a foreign vessel not registered in our country, Philippines, and they are allowed to pass. Now, we will define first what is an innocent passage or where can it allow a, a foreign merchant or public vessel to pass through the marine zone of the littoral state. One is that passage is generally innocent. Okay? And what is an innocent? There is no ulterior motive. Okay? When you pass through a coastal state, you don't have any other motive but simply for your own survival or to maintain uh, peace or safe um, passage. Otherwise, without passing through that neighboring state, you all die or you will you lack um, fuel to reach your destination. Second is that there is only passage through with no loading or unloading of persons or goods. Okay? No loading or unloading of persons or goods. Now, is there a right of innocent passage through an archipelagic water? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay? Ships of all states enjoy the right of innocent passage through an archipelagic water. What is an archipelagic water? The water in territorial sea. You count the baseline from the low water mark, outside of it, it is called territorial sea or the archipelagic water. It is allowed to pass only when it is an innocent passage. And you know the meaning of innocent passage, right? Okay. Now, going back, another question. Is there an, a right of innocent passage through an internal water? Okay. Internal water, no. The answer is no. The right applies only to territorial sea and the archipelagic water. Okay? That does not apply to an internal water. What is an internal water? Counting from the baseline, from the low water mark of the lowest low tide inward, that is the right of innocent passage does not apply. Outside of that baseline, including territorial sea and archipelagic water, it is allowed. Okay? Take note, that is part of Philippine territory, but we allow innocent passage. Take note, it must be innocent. What are those that are not innocent? One, weapons of any kind, like practice of a weapon of any kind. It's not it is not innocent passage. Okay, threat or use of force. It is not an innocent passage. Third, collecting information. Propaganda. Loading or unloading of commodity. Carrying research or survey activities. 
aircraft taking or landing or taking and landing of a military device like drones. Okay? Act aimed of interfering any system. Okay? There are devices now that will destroy the communication of our military. If they are here to interfere with our communication system, then that is not an innocent process. Another, willful act or serious pollution of our, of our country. Fishing activities, other activities having a direct bearing on passage. Okay. <clears throat> what is an internal water? Okay. Is there an innocent passage on internal water? No. But what is an internal water? Internal water is the line landward from the baseline from which territorial sea is measured. Okay? So, I know your good imagination. Baseline, baseline here inward, that is internal water. Baseline outside, 12 nautical miles, that is called territorial sea. Okay? Where, where is innocent passage? Only out, at, outside. Inward, there is no innocent, innocent passage. Now, the innocent passage within the territorial sea actually applies above. Okay? Because that is part of our air space or aerial domain. It is within our exclusive right and no other vessel or aircraft can pass. Okay? That 12 nautical mile exemption is innocent passage. Now, what is the limit of the airspace? There's a limit that if an airplane can go, will go beyond it, the airplane will explode. That is the limit of airspace. Okay? Just that if the, if the celestial body is above us, directly above Philippines, that's not part of Philippines, right? Even if it is directly above the Philippines, okay? Like when the moon is up there, okay? 12 o'clock, when you look up, this way you can see a moon. That does not belong to Philippines because there is a limit of that space. Okay? And you know space is nobody owns it. While while in international water or high sea is everybody owns it. It's res communis. While outer space is res nullis. Nobody owns it. Now, <laughs> What are the methods of determining the territorial sea? One is normal baseline method and the other is straight baseline method. We go first to the first one. What's the first? Normal baseline method. Under the normal baseline method, territorial sea is simply drawn from the low water mark of the coast to the brief plain following the sinocities and curvatures but excluding the internal waters in bays and gulfs. Okay? So, the normal baseline is that you count from the uh, outermost of the low water mark, excluding uh, waters from the bays and gulf. Okay? You follow the curvature. Okay? If it's like the islands is here, you do like that. That is normal baseline. Okay? How about the straight baseline? In the Philippines, what do we apply? Straight baseline. How do we measure Philippine territory using the straight baseline? Under the baseline method, the straight lines are made, connected, appropriate points of the coast without departing radically from the general direction. Okay? So, I, I, I'll just um, show to you by use of my hands, using my hands, let us say this is Philippines and there are islands here. All you have to do is to count. Okay? Count from that low, from the island, everything with the island, low water mark, counting 12 nautical miles. That is Philippine territory. You connect all those lines, okay, at the outermost of the Philippine territory, connect that with the low, with a straight line 
straight line down add 12 that's part of Philippines okay that's the difference between normal and straight baseline method straight baseline you count the you connect the outermost while in the normal you have to uh, you have to make a curvature just like a body of a woman okay you know a body of a woman is is a coca-cola body still but of different guns na may na um, 500 na say 8 ounce na say in can okay those in can are those who take every now and after their meals the coca-cola so na in can okay you know yourself where you belong uh, coca-cola body in can or in litro or in uh, huh? So, that's it. So, that is normal. No? So, in the Philippines, we follow the what do you follow? straight baseline. Now, we go to contiguous zone. So, it's easy. I've been measuring this one. But it's really important that you know this because you may be asked what's part of the Philippines. And if you don't know this, oh, it's an insult on your part. Especially if your grade is 1.3. Okay? You should know the, the answer. Now, the contiguous zone, going back to the origin of counting the 12 nautical miles as part of Philippine territory, that is also the measurement of the contiguous zone. But then the measurement now is 24. Okay? So, meaning from the territorial sea, you add 12. Okay? Because the measurement of the contiguous zone starts from the baseline. Which is 24. Okay? So, half of that is the territorial sea. The other half is the contiguous zone. But what is the purpose of the contiguous zone? <laughs> okay, infringement of the customs, fiscal, immigration, and sanitary laws. Okay? Punishment, infringement of the above laws and regulations. Now, we go to the exclusive economic zone. Okay? What is an exclusive economic zone? Counting again from the baseline where you counted the territorial sea and the contiguous zone, extending up to 200 nautical miles subject to the rights of the adjacent or neighboring state. You cannot extend that in Indonesia. Although the, the islands there are so uh, closed, you cannot extend that exclusive Otherwise, you will have problem with your neighbor on ter territory. But what is the <coughs> rights of the exclusive economic zone? Exploration and exploitation. <coughs> Utilization of the marine resources. Okay. Management and conservation of the natural resources, both living and non-living. Okay? You can also use that for the development of the energy like wind energy or solar or using water as a source of energy. It can be done. There is now an invention using a movement of water. It can actually create an energy. They transform that movement of the wave into an electrical energy okay uh, of course what you know commonly is that uh, the windmill okay the the wind in the ocean okay uh, when, when it drives a, a turbine it creates an energy a source of electricity okay so it will also be used for research okay and control of population now, what is a continental shelf? <coughs> what is a continental shelf? That is the, the natural prolongation. The natural prolongation of the land territory to the outer edge of the continental margin. Okay? As you know, in your, in your science or even in history class, 
that a long time ago we are connected with the landmass of China, right? Yes. The great mass. Okay? But that land prolongated up to the last margin which is in the Pacific Ocean. At the end there is the Philippine Deep. That's the margin. That's the margin. It's the end of the continental shelf. Now, what do you mean by continental shelf and the extended continental shelf? You extend the 200 nautical miles up to that. But if the 200 nautical miles ends, if it's, it, it, it ten, extends and the continental shelf is less than, then that's the end of the Philippine territory. Do you understand what I'm talking? Now, if the continental shelf is prolongated, okay, such that the 200 nautical miles cannot even reach that that end, then the 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 Philippine territory only extends up to 200 nautical miles. Okay. Is there a difference between 200 nautical miles and 200 miles? Huh? Is there a difference? Tell me the answer when we meet next meeting. There is a difference, but I will I will ask you if you can answer me, I'll give you points. Now, distinguish the rights over the exclusive zone and the continental shelf. What are the rights of the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf? Do they have do, do we have the same right? Or does it have the same rights? Unlike the continental shelf, the coastal states the state must claim the zone in order to establish the econo exclusive economic zone. The sovereign rights of the coastal state over the continental shelf are inherent rights. Okay, so take note of that. Inherent rights. Okay, the rights of the coastal state. What in by coastal state? The state that it has, um, the state which is adjacent to it. That is called the coastal state, meaning the neighboring state. Okay. So take note of that. <coughs> The, the right to continental shelf is in inherent right. What do you mean by inherent right? By the time the state exists, it has that right already. It cannot even be subject for a treaty or agreement. The meaning of inherent, by the time it was born, it become independent, it has that right. And do not depend on occupation. What do you mean by occupation here? Meaning, one mode of acquiring territory is you occupy. If you live there, that's yours. That is not that is not a mode of acquiring um, a territory on continental shelf. Okay? It does not depend on occupation. Whoever um, occupy the territory, it's non-bearing. It has no effect. Even if it's occupied by somebody, but as long as it is part of the continental shelf of the coastal state, that remains to be part of the territory of the coastal shelf, of the coastal state. Because it is a continental shelf. Okay, effective and national or unexpressed proclamation. Even if other state would say it is part of that other state, or even if the Philippine government relinquish its right, to be part of that, declaring it to be not part of Philippines, then that is not binding. <clears throat> A continental shelf exists ex facto, okay, and ab initio, from the beginning and from the fact itself. The meaning of ab initio is from the beginning of its existence, okay, and ex facto meaning by the fact, okay, itself. What is a continental margin? Comprises of submerged prolongation of the landmass. Okay? This is, you cannot see this one because this is underwater. Okay? Submerged prolongation of the landmass. Okay? 
well, there are parts of the Philippines like the the one which has discovered, which is discovered by a scientist lately, the biggest caldera. It's an elongation. Okay, it is underwater. Okay, but that is part of what um, continental margin, all, 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 although very far from the Philippine um, water, from the Philippine shore rather, but that's still part of the elongation. Okay? So that is part of the continental margin. Submerged prolongation of the landmass of the coastal state and consists of the seabed and the subsoil of the shelf. The slope and the rise it does not include deep ocean floor and oceanic ridges or the subsoil thereof. So the margin itself, okay, the prolongation and the sudden depth, that, that is called the continental margin. That, that sudden depth is no longer part of the continental margin. <coughs> okay? Now, that Philippine territory includes that uh, margin, right? Above and below it, that's part of Philippine territory. Now, what is the limit of the, of, of the beneath? Okay, take note, it includes subsoil, the seabed. The seabed is what you can see. It's like in a bed, right? Below it is the subsoil. All minerals above and below, subsoil and the seabed, even below it, is part of Philippines, right? But what is the limit? What is beneath Philippines, diba? When you when you dissect, make a whole Philippines down and crossing the the earth and the crust, it, you will reach United States, right? Will, will that be included in our territory? Huh? Is there a limit? Is there a limit of that territory <laughs> be, below? Huh? In airspace, there's a limit, right? How about in in the subsoil, the seabed, is there a limit? Huh? Same condition, but is there a measurement? How many meters? There's no limit, actually. But, you know, it's for, it's all up to you. If you can reach the inner core of the earth, then it's yours. Huh? Yeah. So far, none. None even reach that mantle. Or, I, I don't know, the layers... Inner core, outer core, mantle, where all we only reach the earth crust. Beneath, beneath that earth crust, no one reaches. Who knows? There are still spaces in the earth, right? In the earth, I mean, I'm referring to the earth as, as a, and maybe people are living inside it. We don't know. <coughs> now. What are the rise of the coastal state over the continental margin? One, the coastal state has sovereign rights over the continental shelf for the purpose of exploring and exploiting the natural resources. However, it does not form part of the territory of the coastal state. If it extends or if, if the, co the continent, continental shelf is beyond the 12 nautical miles, it is no longer part of the Philippines. But the coastal state has the right to explore and exploit the natural resources. Okay? What are those that can be... What are those natural resources? Mineral and other non-living resources. Seabed and subsoil together with the living organism. Okay, belonging to the sedimentary species. <coughs> Second, what are the rights? Rights are exclusive in the sense that if the coastal state does not explore the continental shelf or exploit natural resources, no one may undertake these activities without express consent of the coastal state. Now, I'm going to ask you, there is a, an expedition between Philippines and China over over Binham, Binham rice, yes. right? Is it allowed? Is that allowed? Huh? Huh? 
Generally, it is not allowed. The exception to the rule is that when there is consent of the coastal state. Which state has, who is a coastal Philippines? Because it is very adjacent to, that's the meaning of coastal, adjacent. Okay? Now, if I am the leader, like president, I will not allow it. Okay? Why? Who knows? Later on, it will be discovered. It may be owned by them. Okay? And, 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 you know, we have bright students. They can actually explore. Okay? And what, uh, on, on what may be discovered there, that surely belong to us exclusively. Now, what is the extent of continental shelf? The coastal state allowed to claim a continental shelf up to 200 miles from the baseline. However, if the outer margin extends beyond 200 miles from the baseline, then the outer limit of the continental shelf shall not extend up to 350 nautical miles. Did you get? Did you understand what I'm talking? You should know this one by heart. Okay? I'm talking about continental shelf. Okay, this may be applicable to our claim over um, Vietnam Rice and in the West Philippine Sea. Now, if the continental shelf extends up to 350 nautical miles, that's still part of the continental shelf. It does not limit only to 200 nautical miles. Because if the continental shelf the prolongation extends up to 350 miles. That's still, that's still part of Philippines. Okay. <clears throat> From where? From the baseline. Okay. So you count 350 nautical miles. Okay. That if it's continental shelf, but if it's not continental shelf then only up to 200 nautical miles. Example, let us say from from Philipp Philippines, from Samar, um, right side of Samar is already Pacific Ocean. And you know, it's already a margin. It's a deep, Philippine deep, because it's already a sudden, sudden fall of the margin. It's the margin. You extend the Philippine territory up, is only up to 200 not even miles. Now, let us see. We measure Philippines in the Aurora. What's the right northern part of Batanes? Batanes. Okay, that's where you can find the Benham Rise. And it's elongated. Okay. And let us say the prolongation extends up to 1,000, uh, let us say, 1,000 miles. 1,000 nautical miles. What is the part of the Philippines there? 350. 350. You get me? Okay. <clears throat> now, how about in the West Philippine Sea? We don't know yet whether it is a continental margin. Okay? Now, later on, if you can discover that it is in the continental margin, then the territory is up to 350 nautical miles. Okay? I mean, I'm referring to the exclusive economic zone. <coughs> now, what is an ITLOS? International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. What is its jurisdiction? All disputes and all applications submitted to it with the own clause. On clause. United Nations Convention on Laws of the Sea. It also includes all matters specifically provided in any other agreement which confers jurisdiction on the tribunal. Meaning, if a country submits 
Dajun to the eight clause international tribunal on laws of the sea on dispute over it then it has jurisdiction but if it does not then it has no jurisdiction in other words it only act when there is a case submitted to it for arbitration you understand now what is contiguous contentious jurisdiction <coughs> The tribunal has over all these disputes concerning the interpretation and application of the own clause. Okay? Has jurisdiction over all disputes. So if there will be disputes later on between Philippines Malaysia, and Malaysia or Vietnam or China, then it should be submitted to it clause. It lost. Okay. Now we go to in the, um, environmental law. What are the major instruments that have shaped the modern development of international environmental law? One is that Stockholm Declaration on Human Environment. Where can you find Stockholm? In Sweden. The other one is the Rio Declaration on Environmental Environment and Development, which adapts at Rio Conference in 1992. Also known as the Earth Summit. Okay, those are the two major instruments that shape the modern development of the environmental law. Okay? So, remember that. What are the permanent <coughs> provisions of the Stockholm Declaration on Human Environment? Okay? There are three principles. Principle 1, principle, principle 2, and the principle of good neighborliness. Okay? I go first to the first principle. Man has a fundamental right of freedom, equality, and adequate conditions of life in an environment and of a quality that permits life of dignity and well-being. Okay? So man has a fundamental right to freedom, equality, and adequate conditions of life. Okay? You cannot live in a life where you cannot even breathe a, 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 a fresh air. Okay? <clears throat> Principle 2 states that sovereign right to exploit their own resources pursuant to their own environmental policies and the responsibility to ensure their activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states or areas beyond the limits of national jurisdiction. Example, you burn the trees, but the ashes reach Philippines. Okay? That is a violation of the principle principle 2. You may exploit your resources, okay, but that right should not extend when when the when the damage is reached or experienced by your neighbor. Example, um, you damage the ocean layer, but who suffers? It's not only it's not only your country. But all of us. Okay? Now, principle of good neighborliness, which is the principle number three. Prohibit states from using, permitting the use of its territory in a manner that injures to another state and that other states, first persons or property. Okay? So, use your own as not to injure other. Okay? 
use your own so as not to injure others. You may use, you may develop your re, um, resources, but make it sure that you will not destroy the environment of your neighbor. Okay, that is the principle of good neighborliness. <coughs> now, what's the difference between one, two, and three? Masa may sa two ganit? Exploit their own resources for so on to their own environmental policy. Okay, and are responsible to ensure their activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states. Okay, you ex you use your policy. Okay, if it is within the policy, make it sure that you will not destroy the environment of another. That's principle two. Ang three sa may difference. Okay? Prohibits. Okay? This one is prohibit states. The, the principle two, sa ito, use the principle and policy just making it sure that you will not um, damage of, in, of, 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 of neighboring state. While principle three or good neighborliness prohibits states from using, permitting use of its territory the manner that is injurious to another state. Okay? You are prohibited from doing that will destroy another. Now, may a state be held responsible by another state for transboundary pollution caused by private parties within the jurisdiction? What's the answer? Yes. yes. Can, can, can a neighboring state sue another country for an act of a private person? Yes. There are two fundamental principles of liability for transboundary pollution under international law. One, a state must show material damage okay, or and causation to be entitled to legal relief. relief. What then by material damage? Big enough to ask, to ask for damage. But if the damage that it caused, the injury it caused is only minimal, do not ask for it. Okay? <clears throat> so it must be, it, it, they must show material damage, meaning big enough to entitle for a legal relief. Now, the state must, has a duty to prevent transboundary pollution and may even be held responsible for pollution of private parties within its jurisdiction if such pollution results in demonstrable injury to the state. So the owner, the state that cause pollution must make a what? A measure to prevent transboundary pollution. Okay, like Indonesia, they should make measures to prevent it from spreading to another to other country. What is the precautionary principle? What should they do so that they will not be held liable? Okay, under that principle 15 of the Rio Declaration, state that in order to protect the environment. The precaution approach shall be widely approached by the state. So meaning it's not only within, confined in one territory, but should be widely approached. Uh, even then, even if it's accident, as long as you cause damage, the, the intention is not necessary. You have to pay damage. Okay? So it's not a defense. A good faith is not a defense. As long as it causes damage, you have to pay. Okay. <clears throat> now, where there is threat to serious or irreversible damage, lack of scientific certainty shall not be used as a reason for postponing the cost-effective measure to prevent environmental degradation. This is a case of big Beat, beat it along. What's, what's.